of a Rebbe in the concentration camps. It was the first night of Hanukkah and all the Jewish people around him were coming to him asking are we going to light menorah tonight. He was a person that people would come to for inspiration, for help in continuing their belief and faith. And they wanted to light menorah tonight and they were looking to the Blush of a Rebbe to lead them. He took them into a room. They found a shoe with a little bit of a shoelace. They dipped the shoelace into some shoe dye. They took a match and the Rebbe started saying the bracha on the menorah. And then he got to the third blessing. He paused, he looked around to the crowds and he thought for a couple of seconds. And then he started with a shaking and trembling hand, the bracha of shechayanu v'kiyamanu v'giyanu lazman hazeh, which translates, who has kept us alive, sustained us and brought us to this season. Then he lit the candle. Everyone watched as the candle flickered for a while until it finally was alive and burning strongly. Then one person, a questioner, called out to the Rebbe and said, Rebbe, I have a question for you. How can he say Shechayanu? How can he thank God for keeping us alive, for sustaining us at this time? Look at the death around us. Look at all of us who are frightened for our lives. Any moment an officer can walk in and all's over. And we're thanking and celebrating to Hashem for keeping us alive and bringing us to this place and this time. And the Rebbe said, you should know, I was also struggling. I also had this problem. And I thought for a moment and I looked around and it struck me. Look at all these beautiful people standing here today who are risking their lives just to watch me and to fulfill the mitzvah of lighting menorah on Hanukkah, even though they could die for it. How can I not say Shechianu? How can I not thank God for keeping us alive and bringing us to such a time and place where we could be killed, but we're still dying to keep a mitzvah. We're still willing to risk everything to light Hanukkah candles on this night. Does that not deserve the beautiful brach of Shechianu? This story is really powerful to me. When I look around and think back to, to, to previous generations, to our grandparents and great-grandparents used to have to hide underground to fulfill a mitzvah. If they wanted to connect with Hashem, they had to do it in privacy. Whether it was in the Spanish Inquisition, or the Greek stories, or the Romans, whoever it may have been, they were terrified if they were caught observing a mitzvah. And look at us today. Go to the Red Square, look at the Kremlin, the big menorah burning. Look how our government gives us the freedom to observe mitzvahs as we please. How fortunate are we? Am I taking advantage of that? It's something which I have to think about on a regular basis. How I have a freedom which my grandparents and great-grandparents didn't have. What am I doing with that freedom? When the Rebbe said Shechayanu, when he looked around at all the people in front of him, thanking Hashem for giving him the opportunity to light and to keep the mitzvah with all the people standing around him. He wasn't only looking at the people standing around him, he was looking into our hearts and souls. He was looking at all the future generations, at us lighting candles this year. He knew that even if he was killed for lighting the menorah, there's going to be many people because God is going to make sure that every year there will be Jewish people lighting candles. And that is what we're thankful for. Shechayonu v'kiyamonu v'giyonu l'azman azeh. We thank Hashem for keeping us alive, sustaining us, and bringing us to this place and this time where we can continue observing and practicing mitzvahs and building our relationship with Hashem in freedom without any fear. Happy Hanukkah.